Hi everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Melissa with DIY with Melissa and today I have a fun tutorial for you. Uh, it's showing up actually on my computer right now. We're going to go through how to use patterns in design space. It's going to open up a world of creativity for you which I love and I hope you do too. Um, we're going to go through how to use existing patterns in design space um, and how to upload your own patterns into design space. So without further ado, let's head over to the computer and get this started and I'll meet you back at the craft table when we are finished at the computer. Welcome back everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to use patterns within design space. When using patterns in design space, this will be a print then print then cut project only. Um, however, it will give you a slew of options to while to use while creating projects. I'm going to show you how to use what is available in design space, how to use patterns that are available within images, and how to upload patterns from different places such as Google, Creative Fabrica, design bundles, etc. This is really fun to do and it gives you, it opens a whole new world of design ideas. So let's jump right into it. I am just going to hide this. And as you can see, there's quite a few projects on my uh, on my canvas. So an easy way to hide it rather than having to delete anything is by selecting everything and hitting on group. And now we just have one eyeball that we can click off to hide the projects that were sitting on our canvas. Okay, so we're gonna bring a shape in and we're gonna start off by, I'm gonna start off by showing you how you would use Cricut's available patterns. In order to get a pattern, it has to be a print and cut project. That's the only way possible to use a pattern, whether you're going to use it on stickers, uh, printable vinyl, um, HTV, so the printable iron-on for dark or light fabric, or on cardstock, white cardstock, of course. If you really want a very specific, specific pattern and you're not able to pick up the cardstock for that, for instance. So we have our heart in. We're going to move to the operation type. Right now it's set to basic cut. We're going to click on the down arrow and change it to print then cut. Once we change it to print then cut, our color swatch area, when we click on it, you'll notice under print type, our option is normally just color, but now we have a drop down arrow, which also shows pattern, which we'll click on. Once we've clicked on that, a slew of patterns will come up for us. We can scroll through them. Keep in mind, and I am going to show this to you momentarily, that any patterns that you've uploaded from Google or a website of your choice will also show in here. So these are all Cricut's patterns, except for these few up here that I inserted myself. So we're going to find a pattern that we like for this heart. And I like that one. However, you may notice that there is now a line going down the side of my heart because the way the pattern is designed. We can fix that. We can go to edit pattern. And in here, you will see where the issues are and we can scale it. Now we've gotten rid of those lines that were there, which is exactly what we wanted. If you had a design with pictures, for instance, you can change your pattern horizontal, horizontally and vertically. You can rotate and you can flip it. This looks pretty good to me. Those weird lines have now been gone, are now removed. And there you have your image with your pattern in it. Make that smaller. The next way of bringing a pattern in
is by uploading a pattern. So as I mentioned, you can grab patterns from Google. You can grab patterns from uh, websites like Creative Fabrica or Design Bundles, I think it's called. When you click on upload here, we have what well, we typically upload an image or we can upload a pattern. These are the available file types for the patterns that you are uploading. So if you are grabbing a pattern from Google, please ensure it is one of these file types that you are saving. And I have shown this before, but I will show it again. I'm going to search for fall patterns. And a bunch of patterns come up. Choose one that you like. You want it to be as clean as possible. Grabbing images and patterns from Google, you do have to be careful. Um, you don't want to pick up somebody's work. You don't want to pick up something that's not the greatest quality because it will show in your uh, design. Um, and just ensure that you're doing everything the way you should be doing it. If you right click on your pattern, you can click on save image as. When you click on save image as, your type file type shows up here. So this has shown me that it's an AVIF file. If I go back to Cricut, AVIF is not one of the file types that Cricut accepts. So we can't use that image, which is unfortunate because it's really pretty. So we'll try to find another one. So I've right clicked on this one, hit save as, and the type, the image type is a JPEG, which Cricut will allow us to upload. So we'll go ahead and save that. I do save, I try to be as organized as possible. And I do have a folder called patterns on my desktop that I save my patterns to. We'll go back to Cricut and we'll click on upload pattern. We will browse to that area where we have it. Like I said, it is on my desktop under the folder patterns. And this is it here. I open that pattern. I'll show you there. You can name your pattern accordingly, and you can also put your pattern under the colors that it would fall under. So my one's an orange and a red-ish color pattern. I could technically put under yellow as well. So when I'm searching through patterns, I can filter out and hopefully find it a little easier. So we'll click, click on upload, and as you can see, it uploaded successfully. Now, don't fret because it does not show up here right away, um, like when you're bringing in an image, and that's the way it's supposed to be. We will again change our operation to a print then cut, allowing us to open up the patterns available under print type. And here is the pattern that we just uploaded to Design Space. We can edit the pattern again by bringing it in or out and change the horizontal or vertical view of it, rotate or flip it. That looks pretty good to me. And another project is complete. I will just show you that if I filter here under orange, red or yellow, my newest pattern does fall in place. And you can do that to all of your patterns that you may bring in. The next way to bring in a pattern is by going to a website, just like Creative Fabrica. I do have a monthly subscription to Creative Fabrica. Uh, if you don't, you can just buy them as a one-off. And if you're trying to sell something, you can also buy the commercial license um, in Creative Fabrica. I imagine Design Bundles is the same way or similar, um, but yeah. You can search through here to find any pattern that you like. Once you find one you like, you'll go ahead and download it. 
my own downloads into my downloads folder. I can right click and extract and I'll throw this into my patterns folder that I have going. And extract. And there's my pattern that I just uploaded or sorry, downloaded from Creative Fabrica. We'll go back to Cricut Design Space. We will click on Upload. We'll click on Pattern Fill and click on Upload Pattern. We will browse to wherever we saved our pattern and click on Open. We can rename our pattern and again, put it under the colors that it belongs to. Now, again, we're going to bring in our shape. We're going to change our operation to print then cut. And we're going to change our print type to pattern. And here is the pattern that we just uploaded to Design Space. Pretty good to me. The last way on how to upload a pattern or sorry how to use a pattern in design space if you go to images you can type in fall pattern in here different patterns come up we'll click on this one because i like this one a lot and we'll bring it in the major difference up uh, of using it this way versus using the patterns um, through the print and cut is that it's this specific pattern will not be saved to your patterns inventory. Keep that in mind because if you're ever looking for something later down the line, you're going to be like, what happened to my pattern while you look in the patterns on design space? We will then place our image or shape over the pattern. If you want to see what it's going to look like when it cuts, you can change your cut from a basic cut to a pen. So now this gives you almost like an outline of your design and what the pattern inside the design is going to look like. I'm going to change it back to a basic cut, select both the pattern and the heart, and I'm going to click on slice. We can remove the excess and there you have a lovely heart. The last thing you can do, you can also add a pattern to a name with a thicker letter. I've done it to thinner letters before, but it is of course better to see it if it's on a thicker letter. We're gonna change our operation to print then cut which will allow us to go to our color swatch and to our patterns. And we'll find a pattern here that we like. Again, we can adjust the pattern. Just a reminder that if you are using patterns in design space, it will be a print and cut project only. It, uh, cannot be just a cut project. Okay, I have my hearts. I just resize them to four inches for each one. We're gonna hit make, get these printed and move over to the craft table so I can show you what they'll look like. I do wanna show you one other thing. As you can see, Cricut is forcing me to print this on two separate sheets of paper but I can see there's probably enough room here to put all four of them. If you ever see that and you wanna save on material, click on these three dots in this circle here and click on move object. You can move object to a different sheet. So now I have three hearts on here and I really feel like the last one's gonna fit there. Let's just try it. It doesn't work out you can always just move it back um, but I highly recommend trying this way first to see if it will work oh 
forward back, I think. Yeah. And there you go. All four of the hearts are fitting nicely on my sheet. You can also twirl them around if that would help you in any way. Um, sometimes you have to kind of move it around because it doesn't like it when it's over the red lines. It will always pull it back. So we can bring it around this way. Now, just a note. If you choose to do this, after it's printed, you do have to cut it right away because there's going to be no way possible for you to make it look like this again. And the only way Cricut's going to know how to cut it the way it is, is by printing it and then sticking it into your machine to cut right away. Um, so for instance, let's say you were to print it on a separate printer at a friend's house, and now you want to bring it to your house and cut it. You need to have it set up on your uh, computer in the way that you needed to cut so that Cricut knows where the hearts are to cut it. I hope that makes sense what I'm saying. Um, if not, let me know in the comments and I'll try to explain it better. We'll click on continue and click on send to printer. It usually defaults to the printer that you have. I'm, I'm going to add a bleed to this just because I want it for a card and I don't want it to have any white spots showing. System dialog box. Um, you can use this to make it like the best print so that it's very vibrant. Um, my printer, I find, prints very vibrant as it is. I only sometimes do that if it's like a very light colored uh, design that I'm using. I will use that. And of course, if I'm printing something for a customer, I use that all the time and click on best. And then the last um, reason why I would use that is if I'm printing on the glossy photo paper, I will choose that it's a glossy um, print that I'm doing. I think it helps with the drying time, so I usually do that. We'll click on print and get this printed. Kirk, it's been saying, I've um, been putting this up to verify the print quality lately. Uh, if your print does not look like this, then you have to start all over again. So we'll meet you back. I'll meet you back at the craft table. Okay, our designs are printed. And as I mentioned, this is what I was trying to um, say. If you print this, and then X out of your machine, there'll be no way to get these hearts back in the way that they are. So you do have to print and cut if you do adjust your canvas um, situation going on in design space. Um, so I've got these cut now. I wanted to show you as well the bleed that I added. So I'm just gonna remove one and just show you the excess there. And this just ensures that we don't have any white um, showing on our actual design by allowing the bleed to be there. So you can see the bleed on all of these. Just like that. And there's no white peeking on our designs. And if you had a card, we can stick this to the front of our card just like so. Super simple and a cute little addition to your project. Blank cards that you can write things in. Make sure you try out patterns today. You will not be disappointed whatsoever. I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. It is super adorable to be able to pull in any design or any pattern you want into design space. And it's really easy to do. It opens a world of possibilities. Um, hearts are cute for just very simple greeting cards, thank you cards that you want to write notes in. Um, so many other options. Print and cut can be used on vinyl cardstock. 
a printable heat transfer vinyl for both dark and light colors, as I mentioned in, when we were at the computer. I hope you try this tutorial. If you do, leave me a comment below. Let me know what you thought of it. If you enjoyed that tutorial, don't forget to hit subscribe and subscribe to my channel. Hitting the bell button will, of course, allow you to see when I post new videos and the like button if you like the video. Until next week, I hope you have a fantastic week ahead. Happy crafting. Take care and bye now.